Hello, my name is Christian. Today I want to explain the Sensor Hub X2 for its function, why we need it and when we need it. First of all, a little bit of explanation of the board here. We have here the flight controller, the BEC, two sensors for the matter current. They are actually only dummies. We will simulate a current over this area here later on. A sensor completely with cable connected look like this. We can see there's barely any resistance between them. It's around 100 micro ohm. Um, for a normal setup with only one battery, we would need only one BEC and one sensor board connected to the flight controller to just measure the current and the voltage. Um, in this setup here is actually specialized for people who use batteries in parallel. Batteries in parallel could fail, could be connected in this different charge states, 150%, 180%, and this could cause some failure of the copter. Um, the sensor board itself, during switch on, he will perform a self-test. We will find this out with the blinking blue light. After the internal test, he will test the sensors, one and two, with the output values also. And finally, he will switch on for a very short time. The alarm output could be a big LED, power LED or boost or anything in your copter to visually make it possible to see the alarm on the ground. In fact, we will not see over mission planner. So let's see, we will switch on. Self-test Saddam. And we got a blinking blue light, means standby. Our Pixhawk here uh, is a copy, sorry about that one, or clone so-called. Um, finished booting. And the current is zero at the moment. So the first demonstration is a normal setup without any problems. We increase the current and in that moment we go over 2 amp from each battery. The sensor hub will recognize the blinking light will stop, go solid and recognize right now we are drawing current to the system. We go back to zero. Right now batteries are both equal, they are same. Let's connect the sync to mission planner. Hold on, very fast. Okay, here we are. We can see right now our battery is 24.56 volt and the current is zero. So we start flying, we increase the current and we have a little bit of bigger copter in this case. We draw around, not let's say 30 amp per battery, which means a total current of 60 A. So here we go. Both batteries nearby the same current. Our sensor hub shows blue light, means it's okay. Mission planner shows us 57, 56 amp. Yeah, it's nearby correct here, maybe a little bit too low, go a little bit higher. Please ignore the compass message here. Okay, so what would be happen now if during normal flight one battery would increase the internal ER or goes bad? It would return the current down. So we simulate this one now. One battery, battery number two goes down. In that case, one battery reduces the supplying current, the other battery goes up equally the same amount. We can still see here, we are still drawing 60 amp to the system, we are still hovering right now. So we increase a little bit more. And here we go. Right now, the center point was 30 A. So in that moment, the first battery give 10% higher current and the second battery 10% lower current means a difference of 20% of 
you will get an alarm output, a warning. This is a blinking light and the pilot can decide, should I follow the alarm right now and land or should I still go on? If the problem goes on and the battery still dropping in current, a further 20%, the light will go solid. We can see it here, the alarm goes solid. The indicator for battery 2, A2, is red. And it would be really time to bring the copter down at this moment. So if we are landing, the sensor board will switch off the alarm in that moment we touch down and the current reduced to zero. In fact, we don't want to have a very noisy copter on the ground. So we have now one minute time to go to the copter and check which better we give the alarm. Here in this case, I reduce the time to 10 seconds. A little bit better to explain things here. The alarm will be reset either by waiting one minute in standby or disconnect and reconnect the battery to shorten the time. So we can do the same thing with the second battery. We go again to 30 amp around. Second battery and already have the alarm. And the funny point is, mission planner still show us 67 amp, everything is okay, but the first battery only give us 18 amp supply. So it is time to land again. Now there might be one more situation. What happened if we are on the ground? Right now the first battery is connected and we connect the second battery. But the first battery is full with 100%, the second battery only half full. We connect the battery and the current very fast jump up. And we already have an alarm on the ground. The batteries are equalizing out with the voltage and the first battery dropped to zero any time. So after they are to zero, we can check our battery voltage and decide we still fly or we better check our batteries right now. In fact, there was something wrong with the second battery, either not fully charged or damaged or something else. This of course happened also with the second battery. If the alarm is only a short time, if we wait for the reset here, If the alarm is only very short, it means they are nearby balanced out. There will be no alarm coming up. We can see. I, I'm too slow. So, that's basically the function of the board. Um, alarm IOs, we have a 5 volt, 1 amp output. For any LED booster or whatsoever, plus one free relay contact you can combine to any input of the flight controller to initiate a return to home, RTL. Further option is an Equator C output. Connect the display to read out the individual currents. Right now I'm developing this um, display here. I hope it comes out soon. Any questions? Please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you very much for watching.